Charlie? Etty Rout was born in Tasmania in 1877. She was eight years old when her parents moved to New Zealand. At the age of 20, she was one of the first graduates of Gilby's Commercial College, running her own shorthand and typing service in Christchurch. At the turn of the century, New Zealand women had had the vote for seven years. You haven't got any proper clothes on. Come on, get Dare you? Off, off. What would your mother say what to those shameless women? I don't know what the authorities are thinking of. Right, just follow Etty. However, even within this changing climate, Etty was considered a radical. She was a socialist, a free thinker, and believed in the right of the body to be free as well. An advocate of the principles of her friend and later husband, Fred Hornibrook. Very good, ladies. Excellent, ladies. Women in particular were exploited by unscrupulous employers. Etty intervened to improve their conditions of work. Right, the complaints department has just opened for business, so where do you want to start? Well, I'd like to lay a complaint here. So would I. The plight of farm labourers, gold miners and shearers also troubled her. Etty worked with Jim Thorne, later Labour MP for Thames, to secure them a proper wage award, and using her increasing skills of advocacy and journalism, founded the first Labour paper, the Maori Land Worker. I just hope the shearers' union will think their money well spent. With you working 17 hours a day. Hmm. Uh, I think you'd better have a look at this. I can always find the words when I'm talking, but putting them on paper. There's only that second paragraph. So important and so far reaching. I guess that's fine. See this? Jim's becoming quite a writer. Good teacher, that's all. And I need your column. Now, what idea come without it? Don't try the hand-picked husband act with me. Come on. Is it my fault you won't let me make you an honest woman? I'm sure the comrades have something to say about that. What do you think, Jim? Don't answer it. And why would anyone want to marry a shrew like me? Shrews have been tamed before. Only in fiction. We're embarrassing, Jim. <coughs> Everyone has their own way. Well, I'd uh, better be off then. Hey, what time tomorrow? <laughs> Come on, fat ducks. Come on. Friendship with Fred Hornibrook, union advocacy, physical culture, journalism, and the labor movement. Etty's life was full and satisfying. Thank you. But events in the European summer of 1914 were about to change all that. One at a time, let him finish. Fred, all I'm saying is that war is a fact. As socialists, we have a duty... As socialists, it's our duty to uphold pacifism. ...to help the casualties. The amendment says, but will render assistance. That means medical help, keeping supply lines open, caring for widows and orphans. What? It's no we good. We come all this way for nothing. Oh, we we need to go back night. to first principles. Order. Is there a second? I'll second that. Oh, oh you, you would. Oh, Thank you. But what about the Socialist International? The decision was unanimous. What's happening now, then? Worker will not fight worker. We're not asking them to. Well, are we socialists? Are we internationalists? If we condone the use of arms, then why not against the real aggressor, the capitalist class? What about Jim Thorne registered as a conscientious objector and was jailed for his pacifist convictions. 
Fred became a medical orderly on the hospital ship Marama. True to form, Etty organized women to act as nursing assistants and created the volunteer sisterhood. There was considerable opposition to this scheme, both public and bureaucratic. Etty counted it all and installed her volunteer sisters at Trentham Military Camp in 1915, following an outbreak of cerebrospinal meningitis. However, her grander scheme was to take her sisters to Egypt, despite warnings that they would not be allowed to land. Oh, you're a formidable woman, Miss Rout. But I don't think even you... Who against hope believed in hope? Romans. Oh. A habit I acquired from my father. Rabble rousing, I taught myself. Etty's rabble rousing paid off. Mind you don't drink it all at once now. Boy, you've got some grog on it. Oh, you've had a young lad, my boy. To the New Zealand soldiers in Egypt, the volunteer sisterhood was a small piece of all they'd left behind. And Etty was well suited to the matesmanship of army life. Where to with this, missus? Over here and less of the missus. Shokran. Here, yeah, lads. Fruit salad, just like mother used to make. Straight from the tin. <laughs> Good thing your mother can't hear you. Name's Eddie. Called after the king. Some of the same habits too, I hear. Uh. <laughs> well, they didn't do him much good. How do you go in this camel country, then? I'll tell you after I've got my knees brown. <laughs> right, lads, who's for fruit salad? After the tragedy of Gallipoli, families were desperate for news of their men. Casualty lists were delayed. Hundreds of letters were received from anxious relatives. It's gone 11. I've already done a full day in the canteen. Listen to this. Can you give us any news of our son? Letters to my husband have gone unanswered. Of course, the authorities are masking the real figures. There'd be an outcry back in New Zealand otherwise. What's the matter? It's Eddie. Eddie Thomas, little cheeky one. He was taken to hospital with syphilis. This afternoon. Nineteen. I shouldn't allow a boy of that age to, to go with a woman. He's old enough to stick a bayonet in a German's gut. You can't think it's right. It's no use preaching morality to me when two shillings will buy relief on the back streets of Cairo. No, he just got in with a bad crowd. Yes, it's called the army. I don't want to go to war. By 1916, the brothels of Cairo were doing a roaring trade. More casualties of war were to be found in the Australian VD wards than at the front. There were no New Zealand provisions for the treatment of syphilis and gonorrhea. The authorities preferred to believe the problem did not exist. I wonder he knew where to put it. Oh, Maloney's done his bit for his country. <laughs> Better hop but no place for ladies. Oh, baby, I can do you a good turn. <laughs> Nineteen. What's it to you? <laughs> the truth. Sixteen. I put my age up. No good with him. He's just shot one. <laughs> Don't you know what harm you can do to yourself going with a woman like that? Oh, leave that kid alone, you old trout. <laughs> <laughs> Look at her pop-marked face. If you must have connections with prostitutes, wear some protection. And that goes for the rest of you. That's like having a bath with the socks on, ladies. Promise me, for your mother's sake, you will have a medical check right away. Promise me. 